are Sharon and Annie Nderi, two both Westgate survivors. It's five years on, but before we get into that conversation, some news just in uh, indicating that there is an estimated 30 houses that have been burnt in fire, in a fire rather, in Kangemi in Nairobi. Those are live pictures uh, coming to you right now from Kangemi, just opposite the chief's office. So far, there are no reports of any injuries, but the last embers of the fire are being put out right now. The cause of the fire is yet to be established. Uh, some residents say they heard and saw an explosion followed by a fast spreading fire that burnt down wooden and iron sheet houses. We will be bringing you more updates as we get them. All right, so of course that developing story we'll be following in the next uh, few moments and in our subsequent bulletins tomorrow. Now, almost five years ago to the day, one of the worst terrorist attacks in recent memory took place in a popular Kenyan mall. September 21st is a date that has been etched in the minds of Kenyans after four gunmen ruthlessly attacked the Westgate Mall. People of various nationalities and all walks of life who were caught in the terror that befell the upmarket shopping mall that fateful afternoon will never be the same. We've heard the stories of the harrowing experiences of survivors who lived to tell the tale and mourned with those who lost loved ones. Although it was one of Kenya's darkest moments, it was a rare opportunity for the world to see the people of this nation show what is at the core brotherly love and well in this case sisterly love sharon and annie Nderi to join me in studio to share their life-changing experience after westgate and the lessons they are still learning today thank you so much for coming in for uh you know when you go back to that day um and of course it was yesterday the five-year anniversary mm -hmm. what changed for you when you think back on it what changed for you on that day mm, i'd say I wouldn't say that it happened immediately mm. on that day in particular, but it definitely changed in little moments and the months and the weeks that came after that. Right. Um, I think for sure one of the things when you've come through an event like that is to almost start leaving from a, from a space of fear and you, re and you recognize it and it mm. can make your life very small and very, very sort of shielded and, yeah. and, and, and narrow very quickly. Mm. Um, but I think maybe one of the things that I would say changed and with time is that I was less and less, I, I found that I, I started questioning the things that are probably seen as platitudes or sort of bumper sticker things. You know, everyone says, oh, you only live life once, you know, uh, eat life with a big spoon and that whole thing. And it's very easy to just take it like, as rhetoric. But then I started to question, what does that really mean for me? What does it actually, what does it look like for Sharon on a day-to-day -day basis? What's mm -hmm. the thing that I need to, uh, you know, stick my teeth into and get into? And so I found myself challenging myself to not just say things. And I have to say, it's a very, it's a gradual and it's a slow thing, yeah, you know, because yeah. it's very easy to live from a pace of fear. Right. But I was like, what do I want to do? Okay, hmm, I want to be a model. Okay, can fat girls be models? Yes, I'm going to do this thing. <laughs> I want to start a blog. Can I do this? Okay, yes, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. And just saying yes, yes to myself. Yeah more often. I'd say that's one of those things that we re when you realize that you don't know when it's going to come mm. to you, you don't know what situation you're going to find yourself in, you say yes to the situation at hand right. now. You know, Annie, because um, both of you were held up in Nakumat yeah. when this happened, mm, yeah. and there's a point where you saw the gunman as well. You're literally facing yeah. someone who yeah. could be holding your life in their yeah. hands when you think about yeah. it. And, and like uh, Sharon was saying, it's hard not to face life from a place of fear yeah. after that. Yeah. I mean, and for you, what changed from that day? Well, I think, yeah, you're right. It's still, it's still easy to become fearful. But then you know the things that we fear on a day-to-day -day basis, and we, I think we walk around with a lot of fear. Mm. Um, I remember that day looking at Sharon when we realized what was happening and just thinking, all my worst fears, nothing prepared me for this. I was afraid of small little things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and nothing could compare to the situation that we found ourselves in. And by God's grace, we came out of that place. And so it, it gives you just, it, it helps you to be more resilient yeah. and to call on bravery easier because because you've lived through something so horrendous yeah 
And I wonder, Sharon, how long were you there in Nakamut, for instance? You know, when you're in there, you have no idea how long this will last, yeah. really not having any information of what's happening. Yeah. Um, was there a moment of, you know, a silver lining, something that you saw even within that very uncertain, very scary mm. time and mm. moment? Mm. Was there still a sense of hope that you had? Without a doubt. One, one of the things that we always when we think about when we're talking mm. about it amongst ourselves, is that we're so grateful that we were together at that time. Because when the gunman yeah. came in, we had we'd gone our own ways in the supermarket. And literally, the second Annie joined me is when the shooting started and the grenades and all of that. So, you know, when I think about the other people who were in that mall, maybe who were separated from, other, from their loved ones or who could see them mm. injured or whatever circumstance they found themselves in, okay. um, I realized for us that, I, I'm hesitant to say the best thing that could have happened, but the best thing that could have happened is that we were together, mm. and you know, then I, and, and that we lived every moment of that time together. And I don't know if I'd call that a silver lining, but I'm very grateful for it that it, it played out that way. And mm. you were pregnant at that time. I, I was. I, I can was. only imagine what was going through your very mind. Pregnant. Uh, very pregnant. Very <laughs> pregnant. Um, there's a beautiful moment that you described. Uh, something that Sharon did. Yeah, yeah. Just take us through that. Uh, you know, I'm so glad that I was, like she said, that I was with Sharon because in some ways, I think I, I felt, I just fell back to being a last born, you know, and <laughs> she's older than me and, and I was kind of like, Sharon's going to take care of me on, on some level, you know, yeah. um, and she did. Um, but there was some point where it, it got really loud and, and chaotic and we could hear explosions in different places and Sharon came and she, I was, um, lying flat on the floor on my side actually and she came and she put herself on top of me yeah. she covered me with her body because we could hear it getting closer and closer and stuff was flying all over the place and she covered me with her body and that was um just maybe the biggest gift that i've ever been given yeah wow i mean having the it was a literal protection of yeah. an older sister a lot <laughs> yeah. of times it can be from far yeah yeah you know, but to actually have that yeah. was must have been a beautiful and amazing moment you know i wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy to go through that experience mm. but that we got to go through it together was was some well for us some mercy in yeah. the situation yeah yeah you know i have to ask this sharon because mm. you had alluded to it earlier when you go through something uh, it's a very defining kind mm. of experience and oftentimes you walk away with a label and in this case it's Westgate survivor mm, yeah. mm. Um, and you have to now move away from that really to feel that you've healed from that moment in that experience what did you do for, for someone who's probably gone through something similar to not walk around with that label yeah oh well I'd say the initial the first couple of days um, it was hard not to talk about it because, you know, our family had reached out to people, our friends, and so mm. the, it was, we were talking about it all the time. Um, and actually, in the, fa in the five years, since this is probably the first time that we've talked about it as much as we have, yeah. Um, yeah. and I'm glad that we had that time to heal. But I would say, you know, we are, I, I really believe that we're a series of many things that are happening. Westgate happened on a very large scale. Yeah. So anyone who knew, you know, was around, and even people who were not in the country knew about it. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, it can, it's a, it can be a very, it could have been a very big defining moment. But I also, I also think that we are a series of many things that happen, and sometimes privately, you know, and those are the things that also define who you are. And I wanted to use this event as just one of those things. Yeah. You know, I, we hardly even talk about ourselves as Westgate survivors. No. A lot yeah. of yeah. people who know us or have known us since, or even who have known us all along, go, oh my goodness, we had no idea. Because I don't want that to be mm. the label yeah. on me. I am many other things, you know, and I'm a survivor of many other things as well. So one, I guess not touting it, but also just realizing that many things have happened, other things may happen, yeah. and, mm. and no one thing defines me in that sense. So. Annie, this was a very unique experience for you because you are a psychotherapist. Yeah. Um, and you oftentimes would walk someone through this yeah. mm. uh, who's gone through a similar yeah. experience. And it's almost like you are counseling yourself through yeah. that. How, how did you kind of get past, if at all, the experience? I think one of the things that I've learned, and I'm learning slowly, is to question why you've gone through something 
sometimes you want to get past it, you want to move on, you want to get over it, but to, to actually sit down and ask yourself, why did I get the chance to go through the situation and come out of it? Mm. And what is this supposed to make me as a person? How should this change me? Um, and in, in asking yourself those questions, you get more compassion and you can reach out to people and understand them better. Um, uh, instead of just trying to get over something. Uh, and, and it's, you know, fear and anxiety are not things that we are happy to sit with, but to sit with it and question it and inquire of it until you come away with something more than just fear or anxiety. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting because this was uh, an experience an event that it felt the whole nation was going through. Yeah. You may not have been in Westgate that mm, day, yeah. but you felt the the trauma. Yeah. You know, and it really kind of touched the psyche of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And I and I wonder because it, it laid bare the fragility of, of the nation, of our way of life. All of a sudden you're having to be checked when going into church. Mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. <laughs> you never had to think mm -hmm. about uh, having a cop outside of your church or place mm -hmm. of worship, for instance. But it's a reality now. Yeah. It's normal yeah. now. Um, you know, for Kenyans, do you feel that it really did change us or have we become complacent when it comes to our security? I mean, when you're thinking about it now, five years on, have we just become so normalized to the idea that it could happen tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, for instance? I think, um, on the one hand, I recognize the fact that this is not, it's not unique to Kenya on just mm. us on our own. You know, it's, yeah. it's happened, it's the idea of terrorism is happening in places that we would maybe have considered as very safe. It's in Europe, it's in the Americas. So it's not a Kenyan problem, I think it's a human problem. And it's something that we are ad addressing as we live through it. Um, but I think, I, I, I like that we're still um, laugh about things and we take it quite lightly still um, uh, not the security issue but that we don't take ourselves so 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 seriously you know and I feel that we haven't become we're still welcoming people into into our homes and into our lives into our borders and it hasn't affected us in that um, in, in that horrible way I think I think it will not prevail I refuse to believe mm. that this is gonna be uh, a way of being you yeah. know, we're so privileged to be in a country that's not a war-torn country. Yeah. And we forget that until you start talking to our friends from the neighboring countries and yeah. you realize that some people have lived with this all their lives, you know. Um, I think that's, that would be my takeaway from that. Yeah. I don't know. I, mean, I think <laughs> one of the things that in, in the days that followed, I think the, the security forces did get a, a bad rap. And it was unfortunate because there were some things that happened that were questionable. Mm. But you know, a lot of these people, their job is every day to wake up and know that they might go on an assignment and not come back home. Mm. And like you and me, they have families and they have things that they're looking forward to doing mm. and we can be very casual about them. But because they do their job, we can sit here and have this conversation yeah. and, and, it, and it happens so easily. Um, I think that we do need to appreciate what they do. Um, a lot of them lost their lives yeah. that day. And, you talk about uh, Kenyan society. I remember watching on the news and for days, you know, um, the Red Cross had called for people to donate blood mm, yeah. and the queues were going around the building until they had to say, We've ha we have enough yeah. now, we, you know, please can you go home? And people were volunteering. I had a lot of friends who were therapists who volunteered at the Osho Center and worked hours and hours and days mm. and days. And people mm. went and cooked food um, for days. Yeah. That's who we are. I, I honestly believe that that's who we are as a society. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, things like this can sometimes make us forget because we start to look at people differently. But um, one of the things that I was telling Sharon the other day, our butcher at Valley Arcade, uh, who is a Muslim, um, saw our video on Engage. Yeah. And he called me and he said, oh, my sister, you know, I am so sad that you were there, but I'm so glad that Allah allowed you to live through it. And I was like, yes, Jesus, helped me <laughs> to live through it, <laughs> you know. But, but, that, but he, he reached out and offered comfort. Yeah. Um, even though, and though we can call each other brother and sister, mm. this is who we are. Right. 
right. Yeah. I mean, it, it reminds me of uh, that bus attack in Mandera where mm. yeah. the mm. Muslim passengers yes. were protecting yes. non-Muslims. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and again, the humanity shining through mm -hmm. in a dark moment like that, yes. like you were saying, yeah. Annie, Kenyans just amaze me. Yeah. You know, we always say we're resilient to a fault, which yeah. oftentimes can be translated to cynicism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you wonder, where do these hearts come from when a yeah. tough time hits us? Yeah. You know, yeah. what so did you true. see on that day from, from Kenyans and even the days following from your standpoint? For me, the th in the crowd of, well, I'll say the group of people that we were hiding with, um, we, were, we were such a di diverse group of, it was like the United Colors of Benetton, but in Nakoba. <laughs> you know, every race, every size, every mm -hmm. faith yeah. was in there, and we're all praying to yeah. the person whom we call God, mm -hmm. and we're looking out for each other, hey, okay, do you want to lean on my, you know, kneel on my sweater, you know, here, yeah. let me help you with that, and that's, yeah. That's, it's a beautiful thing, you know, when you think about it. And, and, and I feel like that's been an experience, not just for us, but when you look at other t attacks that have happened on our nation, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's almost to, f we want to help so much, it's almost to a fault. When mm -hmm. you think about the fact that we don't think about, let me save myself first, yeah. let's go out and, and, yeah. and let me help this person. When you think of August 7th, you know, a lot of people who got hurt were running back to try and see who they could yes. help, you know, and, yeah. and, and the same thing happened at Westgate and a lot of other attacks. It's I, I'm, I'm grateful that we don't have it in our way of being, that we look out for ourselves mm. first before we go and look out for someone else. I think that's a good thing, you know, and I mm. think that's a testament to the Kenyan uh, spirit. You know, it's not just the bad stuff. When someone's in trouble, we actually go out of our way yeah. to help. Yeah. And I think, okay, yes, I, I, I like that. I'd love to see more of that, you know. Y you can't predict when bad things are gonna happen. And I'm curious, as, as we wrap up, yeah. um, just personal lessons, something that you, learned about yourself because when you go through such a situation you know something is drawn out of you that you don't even know you have yeah <laughs> um what did you learn about yourself from that day annie um i think one of the things that we've come to see and uh, especially between sharon and myself is that we heal differently and we need different situations um to recharge so even though i'm less social than she is. I need to be with people. <laughs> I need to be with people to recharge. And she's very different. Um, Sharon needs to be alone when she needs to recharge, even though she's a social person between us. Um, and just, just learning how to ask for what you need when you need it. Mm. Um, I think that's something that Sharon can say more about now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're just we were talking about actually earlier mm. because uh, you know when you go through whatever, whether it's grieving or a, a, a traumatic event. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, the the thing about how Kenyans do things is that you know we want to come and help you. We want to see you every day. Mm. Yeah. We want to bring you food and all of that. And so and the want thing to hear that the I learned, again again. we want to hear the story oh, again and yeah. again. Yeah. You know, and it works for some personalities. <laughs> but for others, you know, like for myself, uh, I learned that I just, it's okay when you're going through a hard time to say, guys, this is great. It's coming from a place of love and I appreciate it. Um, but maybe I need some time out, mm. you know, and it, it um, I, I didn't ask for it at the time. You know, we probably had weeks of just come over, I made you dinner, we want to see you, tell us what happened. Um, and now to gracefully say thank you for it, but give me some time. And, and to be okay to ask for that. Um, I think it's a, it's a when, when people understand that side of you, it's a gift that they give you. And then when you're ready for, you know, company and love and good meals, <laughs> you know, call me over and let's do that. So, yeah. Wow, thank you so much, Sharon <laughs> yeah. and Annie. And you're right, thank listening you. to yourself and processing at mm. your own pace mm. to finally get that yeah. healing. Thank mm. you for yeah. sharing your story. And of course, um, I hope it's a healing process for many yeah. others who haven't been brave enough to share mm. um, from that experience yeah. and many yeah. others as well. Thanks for watching. That does it for Citizen Weekend. Have a wonderful evening. Our continued coverage on Westgate attack continues tomorrow evening with Jeff Quilange and I uh, tune in for that. Some amazing stories coming out of that. Good night.